football was the only uh, game, I think, uh, growing up in, uh, in, in Lebanon, in, in Beirut, Lebanon, where, where I was born and raised and uh, very proud. Uh, before migrating to Australia uh, at the age of uh, eight years old and uh, obviously continuing my football there. Yeah, I love football from, from the days I watched it on, on TV and played it on uh, Raw on, on the streets. No shoes, <laughs> with and boots and all that. But of course, in Australia, went there, continued, uh, continued uh, my development there. A uh, bit of rugby league uh, took over for a couple of years, but uh, football was always my first love and only love. And uh, yeah, look, it's, uh, it's something that's uh, taken me all over the world. Met some wonderful friends, uh, been, uh, you know, uh, obviously met some great colleagues, played some great derbies, won, won a lot of uh, trophies, uh, personal honours, and of course, uh, team honours. And uh, very lucky. Uh, God is great. And uh, in terms of players you looked up to when you were a kid, who did you want to be like? Who were your idols? Well, obviously Maradona was uh, was was everybody's uh, during the you know the the seventy uh, the eighties when he first came in, nineties when I was growing up. Maradona was uh, Marco Van Basten, uh, one of my uh, other heroes. You know the Rude Hullets, uh, that, that Dutch connection. You look at uh, obviously the South American connection. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, Ronaldo's and, and the Romarios uh, of Brazil there, and of course uh, Zidane also. And I love those technical players. I was a technical player myself, and uh, that's the way I think football should be played. You should be able to express yourself and go out there and entertain. We were entertainers. At the end of the day, we we're entertainers, and that's what I like to see kids even these days. Just go out there, and express yourself, because technique is super, super important. And if your coach tells you otherwise, He's got no idea about football. <laughs> you uh, ended up in Singapore, that's where you played some of your best football. How did you end up in Southeast Asia? Uh, I'd done everything in Australia. I'd won, I'd won everything with, with Sydney City, my first club, with Sydney Olympic, my, you know, my, my, my second club. And it was time maybe to move on. I wanted to move on. I had opportunities to move to Europe, which I didn't. I left it maybe a little bit late, but I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. So they came and watched me and they liked what they saw and uh, I came up with uh, another Australian because they wanted uh, two players, I wanted another foreigner. I said well Alice Edwards at the time was my striking partner at Sydney Olympic and I said look if you're going to take me you might as well take both of us. I mean you know we know each other's games and uh, I think it's much easier and they did, they did. We came over to, to Singapore and uh, yeah we took him all the way to, to the Malaysia Cup final which we lost. But still, we had a, a pretty successful uh, year that year. You mentioned Alistair Edwards, yourself, Alistair Edwards, Fandi Ahmad, you guys mm. formed the dream team, and that's something that people, it just makes them happy. You've seen the response you get in Singapore. Yeah. You, to this day, it still makes people happy. I think people look back on it. It's, it's a bit of romance. It is, it is. A, there's a lot of romance, a lot of love. It's, it's an amazing feeling. It's, it's amazing that they they still recognise it, but they, they, I think they appreciate what, what we did. And there were special times in, in Singapore football. It was probably the most special time that they had maybe since the, you know, the 70s or the, the 80s of their success there. Uh, yeah, don't worry about the, the dream team. I think as a team, we were, we were a very good team. We entertained. We played football the right way. We played football the right way. I, I want to repeat that. That's the way you should play football. You know, go out there, entertain, uh, you know, uh, score goals, uh, win matches. Uh, you know, love, love what you're doing, and uh, the fans uh, really uh, adhere to that. And they love that, and uh, you know, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's just amazing that uh, those rewards that we had. Well, I'm talking about 25 years ago now, I think, uh, something like that. Uh, it's a long time, but they still remember those players, and those players are great players. I mean, Fandi Ahmad, for me, is the best player I've ever played with. That's how good he is, and probably at a time. He was Southeast Asia's number one player and he was one of the best players in Asia. The reason it's so relevant is because perhaps Singapore football hasn't hit those heights yeah. since and that's why it remains relevant until they can get back to those days. Can, can they get back to that? Oh, look, I hope they do, but it, they have to be part of this uh, MSL, which they're not part of it. I mean, they've chosen to go another pathway and, you know, they've got their own, uh, uh, obviously, uh, right to do that. But uh, we're talking about the Malaysia Cup football, it's special. 
It's that rivalry. They, they cross the causeway rivalry. It doesn't matter who Singapore play, which state. It's, it's, it's rivalry. It's Malaysia versus Singapore. Yeah, and it's great. The Singapore uh, public love the state teams coming in there and, and play. And the state teams here and love when, you know, the, the Singapore Lions team came and played against them. It's full house. And during my time, it's full house. It was the best seat in the country, you know, and you couldn't get a seat. Singapore brought Abba so many highlights, but also the darkest spell of his career, where he was accused of helping teammate Michael Varner to fix matches. Varner, who would have been a key witness in corroborating his friend's side of the story, fled. Abbas maintains his innocence to this day. He had his FAS ban lifted in 1999 and was verbally defended by Varner himself in the 2012 documentary, The Abbas Sad Story. Abbas doesn't know that I, where I'm going, you know. Abbas just sitting in my car. Varner finally speaking out has helped put an end to a chapter that surely would have weighed heavy on any player. Honestly, there's never been a weight on my shoulders, to be honest with you. The weight was never on my shoulders. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it's great. It's great to tell his story. Uh, it's great to, to hear it from the horse's mouth, because that's, that's the best way to do it, isn't it? To hear it from, from the horse's mouth. And, uh, yeah, I hope the, the fans of, and all the supporters and the, from both uh, countries, Singapore and Malaysia, uh, probably understood my story. And, uh, it's great to get it out there. I hope everybody's watched my documentary because it's a great documentary and it's, it's an honest, it's 100% it's, it's straight and honest uh, and, and that's, that's what I wanted to, to see that. It's great to, 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 have, you know, to be part, to live in Malaysia. I love uh, living here in KL. I've got a great job, I work for a great company, you know what I mean? So uh, when I'm in Singapore working, I love being in Singapore, I've got so many friends there also and uh, I've always treated me with respect and as you said, you know, uh, I've always been an icon to, to them but most important, I'm just a normal person like anybody else and uh, I don't think I've changed, I will never change, what you see is what you get with me and it's just that uh, relaxed attitude uh, of mine, you know, that's the way I love to live my life, it's just simple, just, I just get on with it, you just get on with it, you only live once, just get on with it. Be happy. I think mean, the world needs more happiness than uh, you know to uh, to be thinking about to you know to be angry. You know, too much anger going around. So I forget. Look, for me, I forget. I don't forget, but I forget, and I just get on with it. And that's what I did. I, I don't forget what happened. You, you never do. You never uh, you never forget the good times or the bad times. I'm happy living my life. I'm comfortable living my life, and uh, yeah, and that's just the way I like to live my life. <laughs>